Hi, in this video, I want to talk to you about the equity internal rate of return. In my previous blog post, I talked about the different forms of equity contribution and the role of the financial model in optimizing the capital structure. Of course, I'm going to put the link down below if you missed this episode. Today I want to start a new series of discussion and we're going to talk about the different equity return measurements in a project finance transaction and we're going to talk about the equity IRR. We are going to basically talk about what is equity IRR and how to interpret it, what is the basis for the hurdle rate, how is the equity IRR calculated and the different equity IRRs, and namely pure equity IRR, shareholder loan IRR, blended equity IRR at financial close, blended life cycle equity IRR. Uh, equity IRR is basically a metric, a measure that the investors, they use to uh, evaluate the financial viability of a project from their point of view. How to use it so you compare you calculate the equity IRR using a proper financial model and then you compare it with the hurdle rate if the, pro, uh, the equity IRR is greater than a hurdle rate this means that the investment is acceptable if however the equity IRR is less than the hurdle rate the rates the return that the investors they have in mind uh, then um, the investment is not acceptable or it requires some uh, restructuring. So if you ask me what is the basis for the hurdle rate, then that's a completely different topic. And uh, it basic, basically takes us into the discussion about the cost of capital, the shareholder weighted cost of capital, the country risk premium and different factors. So I'm going to put a link down below and it's also in my blog post where uh, it takes you to Professor Edward Bodmer's website and he explains in detail about the subject. So for the rest of the discussion, I'm going to take you through a financial model. This is a project finance. Uh, this is a project finance model. It's uh, it's for a solar project. It has the input sheets separated by type and by. So these are the constant inputs. These are the time based inputs. So I'm not going to go through the detail of the model, but basically I'm going to first show you the financial statements and this is the cash flow waterfall. So in a proper or standard uh, project finance model, you should have a dedicated sheet or a dedicated section of the model for the financial statements. And basically you need the three main financial statements in a project finance, which is the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow waterfall or cash cascade. I have another blog post and video about the topic and I also did a video together with Daniel from Plum Solution. I'm gonna put the link down below if you're interested. So basically to calculate the equity IRR, most of the information that I need, I should be able to find it from the cash flow waterfall. So as you can see here in, a, in this cash flow waterfall, I have, uh, I start with the operation, I receive my revenues, then I pay all my contractors, operating expenses, maintenance, and then I pay my taxes, and then I pay the debt service, and then I fund my reserve account, and then whatever is left, as you can see here in this line, cash flow available for shareholder. So it needs to go for the payments to shareholders. So this can be either in form of dividends, uh, either in form of dividends, or it can be in form of um, shareholder loan repayment. Okay. So what goes into the calculation of equity IRR is first of all, as an outflow is the pure equity and shareholder loan drawdown is the amount of capital that the investors, the shareholder that they have put up front to finance the construction. And uh, as an inflow, we have all the payments to the shareholder in any form or in any shape. So for example, here we have a shareholder loan, we have dividends. So in your project, you might have some management fees or anything. So all of these uh, cash inflows and outflows need to be included in the calculation of equity IRR. So now next, I want to show you the different type of equity IRR that I calculate or can be included in a financial model. 
So the, before we go into that, I just want to tell you that the most important one is what we discuss here now, the, what we call the blended equity IRR, meaning that you put whatever is uh, is basically distributed to shareholder as uh, inflows and whatever in what form or shape the investors they have contributed to the financing of the project is an outflow and the IRR is going to be the blended equity IRR that is a measure of the uh, investors return okay however just for information purpose or just for reporting you can also calculate the below or, or the following uh, ratios so here I have, for example, as you saw here in this model, I have two forms of equity contribution, pure equity or share capital. And I also have a shareholder loan tranche. And from what I understand, let me show you in the input sheet, I will tell you what, uh, I will tell you what percentage of, uh, so as you can see here, um, uh, yeah, is it this one? Let me see. No, that's the development stage. But let me show you in the financing assumption. Yes, here. So as you can see, I have 35% um, of the total equity is contributed as pure equity or share capital. And the remaining 65% is contributed as shareholder loan. So I want to I wanna basically... Um, just as, as I told you for reporting purpose, I want to uh, calculate the, the return on this portion of the equity, which is the share capital. Okay, so that's what I do here in this section. As you can see, I say as um, dividends are the remuneration of the share capital of the pure equity. So it's an inflow and the outflows are the pure equity, how much that 35%, how much has been contributed as pure equity. And we have another outflow here, which is the um, withholding tax on dividends. So that's also a negative that needs to be taken into consideration in the evaluation of the equity return. And I also have a cash call. What does it mean a cash call? Cash call means that during the um, operation of the project, in, in not in the base case, but in some down cases where you apply like 20% um, increase in OPEX or increase in um, interest rate, whatever, you know, down case scenarios that you are um, testing on the model, there might be some cases that there is not, not enough cash to repay the debt or repay the OPEX or basically there is a problem with the cash flow. In those scenarios, you might want to allow the cash call, meaning a cash contribution from the investors to solve the problem. However, even if that's the case, you should have some alerts and some checks in the model to make sure that uh, all the checks are satisfied, all the ratios are satisfied. And if that's not the case, the user needs to be um, alerted by the mean of these checks that something is wrong. Okay, so basically then you have the net cash flow to pure equity and uh, the IRR of that is basically, as you can see, I am using X IRR and that's because the model is periodic, it's not annual, so I need to use the X IRR. And this is going to give me the return to pure equity only. But that's not the complete picture. You know, as we said, this is not a complete picture because the same investors, this is only for an investor if that investor is only contributing pure equity. However, we have a story, another story as well, which is the shareholder loan. So let's do a separate calculation also for the shareholder loan. So most of the most probably you will tell me that listen the shareholder loan IRR should be equal to the interest rate on the shareholder loan. Let's look at the inputs uh, um, and see what is the interest that we are assuming on the shareholder loan. It's fifteen percent, okay. Uh, and when I do the calculation of the IRR, basically I'm going to put the proceeds, uh, any distribution on the shareholder loan, which are the interest and principal as inflows and the outflows will be the shareholder loan drawdown, how much shareholder loan has been drawn during construction and any withholding tax on uh, shareholder loan interest or my, maybe even principal. OK, so when you take all this into consideration, you put all of these in the mixer and then you do the calculation for the IRR of that, it will be, as you see, it will be less. And this is because uh, there are two factors here. One is that the interest uh, on the shareholder loan during construction is not paid and is capitalized. I have not come across any situation where the shareholder, their interest 
has been paid during construction. It is basically capitalized and is repaid as part of the principal repayment. And secondly, because of this, as you can see, this uh, withholding tax on shareholder loan interest, these are all causing um, the return on the shareholder loan to be less than the interest. Okay. Now that we calculated both of these separately, now we can do what we call a blended equity IRR. Okay, so blended, let's first go through the blended equity IRR at financial close. So in this situation, as I told you, it's just like you are mixing the inflows and outflows on the shareholder loan with the inflows and outflows of the pure equity. You put all of these in the mixer as we are doing here. So the inflows are going to be dividends, shareholder loan interest principal, and the outflows are going to be all that we mentioned in the, the two, two other sections, drawdowns on pure equity and shareholder loan, withholding tax, any taxes, whether dividends or interest, and cash goals. You're going to put all of them together and you're going to get your line for the net cash flow to equity. And, um, and then you're going to calculate the IRR. Again, it's in terms of the Excel function, it's an X IRR because it's periodic. And this is going to give you a blended equity IRR at financial close of 14.8%. So you might ask me, why do you call this at financial close? This is because as you see here, the shareholder loan and the pure equity or all capitals or investments that are put in place post financial close. So they are served to pay for the construction phase, right? So as we know, in order to bring the project to financial close, investors, they also need to put money. And this is called development capital. It's coming from another budget, okay? It might be also that there are two different investors. So there is one investor, which is a develop developer of the project, which will come and bring the project to financial close and sell it to another investor. And so that's gonna be, if that's the case, and this is the story of your project, then you don't need the next Next IRR that I'm going to explain here, which is the blended life cycle IRR. Just the IRR at financial close will be enough. However, if you are facing a situation where the investor is uh, participating both in the development and also in the construction phase, then you need another layer and that layer is basically development. So that is the next section, which is the blended IRR at uh, life cycle IRR. So in this uh, life cycle IRR, what I include, I also include as outflows, the development expenses. So as you can see here, this is uh, my construction starts here. So you see in June 2022, that's when the construction starts in this project. Prior to that, we have one year of development. So these investors, they have put 1 million of development capital and the development capital, because it needs to be remunerated as well. It's also riskier than the um, construction capital. So that's why there is a remuneration usually higher than the equity IRR for the development capital. And it's usually, um, this is distributed, the premium is distributed at financial close and in sometimes during construction, at some points uh, based on a schedule during construction. So I am also putting that, um, the return to the development capital in this mix, mix, mixer or in this mixture. And this is giving us what we call a blended equity IRR, which in this case using the IRR, XIRR Excel function, it's 15.8, which is higher than the um, blend, uh, the life cycle, uh, sorry, the blended IRR at financial close. And that is because the IRR of the development capital is also remunerated. So if this is not the case and the development capital is not remunerated, which is just very odd because nobody is putting money for free, developer when they're coming and they're investing all their money during the very risky development phase, they need some remuneration. However, if this is the case that this is not remunerated, um, you will see that um, the blended life cycle equity IRR will be less than the equity IRR at financial close. But as I said, this is not realistic. So um, let's go. We have another case that I want to tell you. So in terms of the summary sheet or your dashboard, you can report all of these. As you can see here, I have my blended equity IRR with the cash flow for the blended equity IRR at financial close and also at um, life cycle. I have the pure equity IRR, shareholder loan IRR, all of them. I have them in the dashboard. 
with the waterfall chart to show the different distribution and inflows and outflows. However, you might, if it is for the investors, you might have more than one investor in a project. So you might have shareholder one, shareholder two. You might want to do a separate calculation for different entities because there might be different contribution, first of all, uh, in terms of the how the capital is invested and how it is remunerated. And second of all, there might be different taxes. So one investor might be based in Kenya and is, and is taxed differently. And another investor is based in UK and is taxed differently. So you need to consider them separately. So as you can see here in this project, I have two investors and, um, and they, I have different profile for both of them. And in the financial model, of course, you want to give flexibility to the user to play with the different options. For example, here, just to show you, I, I want to show you the impact of the dividend tax. So as you can see, not having the withholding tax on dividends can improve the, uh, the shareholder IRR. And we see the impact here. So we can test all of them here. And uh, for example, the different, um, you can also have flexibility in how the equity is basically um, structured in terms of the percentage shareholder on the percentage um, pure equity and all of these are the flexibilities that you need to allow in your financial model in order to allow for this optimizing the equity structure in a deal. That's it for me for now. In the next um, blog post and video, I think I'm going to talk about the project IRR and we're going to dis continue this discussion. However, if you have any feedback or comment, please let me know. And if you have any question also, I hope I'll be able to answer and I will be happy to answer. So see you next time. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.